Han Dang was a veteran of Wu who served since the rise of Sun Jian, while Song Xian came to join them during Sun Tzu's time. Information about Song Xian is sparse and scattered throughout the other various biographies of noteworthy people. For example, his birthplace, ancestral home, curtsy name, ranks and appointments were not ever recorded. Han Dang was from Lingxi County, Liaoxi Commandery. He possessed great physical strength and became highly skilled in archery and horse riding. His physical prowess was recognised by Sun Jian, who recruited him as a mercenary, known as a Yuxia. This literally means wandering vigilante, but can also be translated as knight errant, cavalier, adventurer, or even a soldier of fortune. He accompanied Sun Jian as a major of a separate command throughout his missions in the 190s until 191. He always fought deep within the enemy ranks, so would often come back with captured prisoners. Because he always shared his captives with the other officers, so they could also gain merit, and because of his mercenary status, Han Dang's promotions were limited, so he only rose to the rank of senior major under Sun Jian. Where Han Dang resided after Sun Jian's death in 191 is not specifically recorded. With his mercantile ways, he could have followed either Sun Ben or Sun Su, or even gone his own path for a couple of years. Sun Ben, being the older cousin of Sun Tzu, gathered many of Sun Jian's soldiers and generals, then went to Yuan Shu in Nanyang. Sun Tzu raised a small militia after he buried his father, but it was far from sufficient for him to establish his own power, so in 194 he also went to Yuan Shu. Yuan Shu became very impressed with Sun Tzu, and often lamented that he had no son like him, so he returned Sun Jian's former division of troops to him. Continuing to use his blade for his former master's son, Han Dang was promoted to a colonel who was first to ascend, and given 2,000 troops with 50 horses. He fought his enemy wherever he was sent throughout the conquests in the Xiangdong region. Around early 195, Liu Yao's administrative centre at Xue County came under siege by Sun Tzu. At this time, Dai Shi Tzu was scouting the perimeter of the county, where he encountered Sun Tzu and his 13 riders at Shen village. Han Dang and Song Xian were among the horsemen who followed the lead rider Sun Tzu when he was challenged to a duel. The fighting spirit of the little conqueror was put on display for all to see, until reinforcements from both sides showed up, which put an end to the ordeal. Han Dang and Song Xian both pledged to Sun Quan in the year 200 after Sun Tzu's death. Three years later, Sun Quan headed west to attack Huang Zhu at the Battle of Xia Ku and found great success, but the Shan Yue started causing trouble in Wu's home territory. Unable to breach the walls of Jiangxia and forced to retreat preemptively, Sun Quan dispersed his forces to pacify the entire region by giving them important administrative positions. Han Dang was made chief of Lian and brought the local Shan Yue into submission. He once led 10,000 shock troops against the bandits of Danyang, completely crushing them so the local tribal peoples became afraid of him and submitted to his administration. Fighting in numerous border skirmishes throughout the years, Han Dang eventually came under the command of Zhou Yu and Cheng Pu for the Battle of Red Cliffs. He was always respectful and obedient towards his superiors, and he would always follow laws and orders to the letter. During the Battle of Heifei in 215, Zhang Liao and his 7,000 men put up a stalwart defence against an army of around 100,000. Song Xian and Xu Sheng's units were routed by Zhang Liao during an early skirmish, whilst Chen Wu died in the fighting. Whilst the men fled, Pan Zhang quickly rode into battle and beheaded two panicked soldiers under Xian and Song to gather others to fall in line. Ling Tong fought within an inch of his life to save his lord, but nevertheless, Sun Quan suffered a devastating defeat and barely escaped alive. In 219, Han Dang joined Lu Meng for his successful invasion of Jing province, Thereafter, he was made administrator of Yongchang Commandery. He also fought alongside Song Xian during the Battle of Xiaoting in 221, where Liu Bei sought revenge for his fallen brother Guan Yu. In response to the Shu invasion, Sun Quan ordered Lu Zun to be his Grand Controller and granted him 50,000 troops to resist the enemy. Han Dang was stationed with 5,000 troops at Wu Lin Commandery alongside Lu Zun and Zhu Ran. Lu failed to capture an enemy camp during his counterattack, so was under pressure from his soldiers who were sacrificing their lives for nothing. He devised a strategy, then spearheaded the Shu forces at Xu Xiang alongside Han Dang and Zhu Ran, scoring an impressive victory. Song Xian attacked and destroyed five enemy camps and killed their commanding officers. When Liu Bei retreated to Baidi Cheng, 
Song Xian suggested to Lu Xun that they press the attack, but he did not approve because he knew that Cao Pi would most likely take advantage of this Shu Wu conflict. After the battle, Han Dang was further promoted to General of Vehement Might and received a village Marquee. Song Xian was never mentioned again, and it's not known what happened to him after the Battle of Yi Ling. In line with Cao Pi's three pronged invasion of Wu the next year, Cao Zhen attacked Wu's garrison at Xiangling County in Nan Commandery. The first objective for Wei was to attack and subdue Nan Commandery, which would open up the opportunity to capture Xiangling. At this time, it was very critical and uneasy for the Wu forces, since Xiangling's commander, Zhu Ran, was in control of a very low number of troops. Zhang He led the Wei forces to overrun Nan Commandery, then marched the army to assist in the main siege of Xiangling County. By now, Han Dang was an inspirational leader. His presence would unite the soldiers around him and raise their morale. Pan Zhang's ploy burned the Wei pontoon bridges, which brought them enough time until the Wu reinforcements arrived. Han Dang's successful defence of the southeast area for over six months earned him the title General Who Displays Firmness, then he became the administrator of Guanjun. Han Dang died of illness in 227, about two years before Sun Quan declared himself emperor. His son, Han Zong, inherited his mark estate and military command, but also sullied his father's good reputation. He abused his authority by saying things like, it's easier for Wei to burst through Wu's borders, but he was forgiven by Sun Quan due to Han Dang's past contributions. He was excused from military service, but he still worried that one day he would face punishment, so he forced his female relatives to marry his subordinates, took his father's coffin, and then fled for Wei. Placed back on the border between Wei and Wu, Han Zong would often lead raiding parties, killing many civilians in the process. He met his end at the Battle of Dongxing, where after Zhu Ge Ke presented his head to Sun Quan's grave. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.